G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for the second part of our WPF applications tutorial. This time around, we're going to focus a lot on code. Now, I know we've done a lot of coding in the past with our console applications, and if you've watched all of those videos that I've made, or you've done some previous experience in console applications, and this is your first foray into WPF or GUI applications, I want to really stress here that all the techniques that you've learnt, if statements, variables, loops, things of that nature haven't gone anywhere. In fact, they're probably even more important now that we have more power in our form applications. The only things that we're going to lose are our write lines and our read lines. And that's because we now have buttons and we now have text boxes and things like that that take their place. Now, the biggest emphasis on this video is not just in code, but the way code is executed, okay? In our good old console applications, we started at the very first line of code, which was submain, and it worked all the way down our program. Doesn't matter how many subs or if statements or loops we had, it would always end up down at the bottom of n sub of submain and shut down our program. Now that's known as sequential programming. It's sequential because it starts at the top and sequentially it will work its way down one line at a time until it meets that endpoint. Now that we're going into WPF applications or GUI applications, we're looking at event driven code okay so that means that our code is now driven or executed by certain events okay and what we're going to do today to emphasize that to learn about events what they are and how they work we're going to create a little silly program which is called color themes and all we're going to do is we're going to have three buttons on the program when you click on each button it's going to change the color palette of the entire form and all of its buttons and then when you mouse over a label it's going to change color so it looks a bit like a link now there's going to be absolutely no purpose to this program whatsoever I'm using it to try and teach you exactly what the hell is going on here alright now specifically let's set up the form first because I can't really explain things to you if we haven't got anything on our form so first of all I'm going to create a button okay I just typed in button and I hit enter because that was already highlighted and it inserted a button inserted a button for me now if you would like if you're the kind of person like me who likes to drag and drop to duplicate objects you can hold the alt key and if you have a look at the icon of the mouse cursor we get two arrows which indicates we're in duplicate mode so you click and drag and do it a couple of times we're going to use three different colors you can have as many as you want I'm just going to do three next one is going to be a label press enter get him down there and the label is simply just going to have the color that we're going to that the palette is just something so I show you how we're going to update colors and how we update the text inside a label. Now, before we do anything, let's resize this form so it looks reasonably sized. Okay, set a title to the form. So down here where it says title, or down here in your XAML, let's go to color themes. It's not really anything important or interesting this time around. It's just an emphasis. And before we do any coding whatsoever, every single object you're about to program with, okay, or it's going to be included in your code, you must name them. The reason you must name them is if you watched the last video, you saw I couldn't access the text box until I named it, and that is because it didn't have a proper name to begin with. Alright, so for this guy, for instance, if we click on the button, name says no name. Now that's great because if it if an object doesn't have a name and you're not going to use it in your code, it won't clutter up your auto drop down boxes or your auto completes. All right? And I'll explain what I mean exactly in a moment when we get to the coding. But if it has a name, it's going to appear in your code quite easily in your auto complete boxes. Okay? So for this guy here, let's first of all set his content to white because that's going to be our first theme. Our second theme will make yellow. And then finally, let's make it blue. Okay? Now back to the naming, as for this guy, call him a really obvious name. Now if he's going to change the thing to white, call him Button White. So BTN for short. Now the reason we call them BTN White like that, is BTN obviously is short for button. But what it does is it emphasizes in your coding exactly what it is. All right. If it was just called white, it would be hard to distinguish between the color white and the button white. And it also means I can have a label called white. It means I can have many things called white. So long as they're preceded by what they are. Okay, It's just a little good coding practice. All lowercase, three letters, tell it what it is. Okay, Same thing for yellow. We're just going to call him button yellow or BTN yellow, BTN blue. And you can see down here in the coding, 
how it's adding in the names. Sometimes, whoops, people prefer to do it down here. I'm just going to do it here for this video. A label, you can short it LBL. And I'm going to call it LBL color because that's going to be what it is. And for the content, it's by default. Everything is white. So let's set it to white. Okay. So when we click on each of these buttons, it's literally just going to change the color of the buttons and the form's background to that associated color. And also the text. Excuse me. So for example, like it's already going to be set to white. So what we need to do is change the colors on these buttons automatically from gray to white while we're designing it. So where you find that everybody is under the brush. Okay, a brush, just think of it like a brush stroke with a paintbrush. All right, there's the background color. Okay, you can do many things. You can choose many colors. I'm just going to set it to white and I'm going to do the same thing for yellow and blue. Just drag him up and just drag him up. Now if I hit start, everything is white and everything is ready to go. All right. What I want to talk about now briefly before we add our code is this idea of events. Okay. We've played with the properties a little bit here in the last couple of videos, including this one. And I've shown you this quickly. The event handlers for a selected or item element, I think it says. I call them controls or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Now, what these are, these are all different things that can occur in your program that can trigger your code. Now, some of these events have to do with the user. Some of them have to do with the system and even more things like that. So for instance, click is a fairly straightforward one. So when they actually physically click the button, it will execute your code. All right, let's go to other obvious ones. Got focus is when the button is highlighted in blue. So if I press tab on my keyboard, you can see you got this little outline here. That's called the focus. So when that dotted line would go over button white, the got focus event would fire off any code that I've got inside of it. Now there's heaps and heaps and heaps of events here and to tell you the truth, I've probably only used a handful of these on every single um, control in my entire programming career. Now there is another one that's pretty interesting. It says mouse down. Now mouse down is when the mouse button is clicked or any button that really is on the button. The difference between mouse down and click is the click also includes if you press enter or spacebar on the keyboard while the button has focus. All right. So these are the ways that code is now executed in your program through events. Okay. So let's say I click on, let's start with the button yellow because we're already white. So I want to show you something that's going to actually happen. So if I want to create some code for when they click on the yellow button, what you do there is you double click inside this text box. There are many other ways to add in that event handler, but this is the easiest, I think. Double click and we're inside the code ready to go. And before we add the code, I want to explain all this stuff that Visual Basic has filled in for us. Please don't try and type this stuff out. Just let Visual Basic generate all of that for you. And there's a reason for that, okay? Because different events have different parameters, okay? The sender object is whatever control brought us to this code. So for instance, if the user clicks on button yellow, then the sender object would be BTN yellow, okay? It'd be the whole button, everything about the button. E routed event args, everything about what happened when they click on the button. Now, some events have things like the mouse position, the key that the person clicked on the keyboard to get to this event, things like that. And finally, the most important bit of this sub is the handles, okay? If I took that away, this code would no longer be associated with button yellow. Even though it's got the name button yellow click, that's just a name. Okay, that was just generated by Visual Basic. The most important thing is that it has handles, the button yellows, click. Okay, that is by far the most important bit. Okay, so if you lose that, this code will not execute. All right, I'm done emphasizing that. Let's add a tiny bit of code to our program to change the button and the form colors and the text on the label. And it's pretty easy to do. To change the form color, you never refer to it. It's called main window, but you don't type in main window because you don't get the right things, okay? Main window is not actually what we're looking for. What we are looking for is me, okay? Provides a way to refer the current instance of a class. So the class is main window, so we're referring to me. If I put a dot, this is how you access all of the properties of any control anywhere. 
and you'll notice that it's exactly like we had back in the days of consoles. We have a spanner for the properties, so they're the ones that you change with the equal symbol, and you have your purple boxes, which are your events, okay, or your commands, I should, sorry. Not events, commands. All right, so right now, background is already highlighted because I've used it in the previous project, and it says it gets or sets a brush that describes the background of a control. In this instance, the background of the form. So if I go back, because it's a spanner, you have to put an equals after it. So if background equals, now how do I know what to type in? Can I just type in, oh no, sorry, it wasn't white, it was yellow, we're in. Nothing comes up but the button yellow. And I can't say the background color of my form equals a button. That doesn't make sense. Okay, or the background color of a button, yeah. So if you have a look, when you mouse over it, it tells you what data type it is. It says it's a brush. Okay, so what we can do is type in brush. The only problem is, it's not the one that we want. It's actually brushes, okay? Predefined color objects. So if you put a dot after brushes, you get a ton of them, including tomato, which I've never seen before. <laughs> but anyway, there's yellow. That's the one we want. And it's what we're gonna do for each of the buttons. So what I'm gonna do is copy all that, and we're gonna go button white dot background, oh sorry, dot background equals yellow button yellow, dot background equals yellow, button blue, whoop, dot background, I was trying to be a smart ass and it didn't work. And then finally we need to change the label. So type in the name of the label, and then we have to go dot, and whatever property we want to change, content is the text on a label. So because it's a spanner, it's a property, once again, we have to put the equal sign, and it's a string, so we're going to type in the word, in quotes, yellow. If I hit play now, this code is only going to execute when I click the button. And there we go. Now if I click on the other, I haven't coded the other buttons yet, so they're obviously not going to work. The one thing I want to say before we other code the other buttons, I mean, is that because this is inside an event, and the user is the one that controls when this event happens, I can write this code once, and the user can choose how many times they want it to happen. It's an infinite process. It's like having a loop, but having the user in control of how many times it happens and when it happens. So let's copy this code here from yellow to me. Do, 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 copy. And we're going to add it to the white button. So double click on that. Let it generate the sub. And change them all to white. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, sorry if that was too quick. That's how I code. I don't like to stuff around. Okay, and then finally, blue. Okay, blue, 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 done. All right, if we hit play now, these three buttons should be operational and we should be able to switch between any color whenever we want. Okay, so let's hit play. There you go. The only thing I want to change now, firstly, I notice the text is not center aligned. It's sort of left aligned, so when the word goes longer, it's sort of overlapping. So I'm going to change that quickly. And we need to change it so when I mouse over the text, it becomes red for some reason. Because I'm just trying to show you events, that's all. Okay, so to change it so it's center aligned and not left aligned in your properties, you go down to, is it text? Whoops, I clicked on the wrong one. You click on the paragraph symbol, and I can't change it, apparently. Or is there another button? Am I just silly? Mmm, I'm just silly. I can't remember where it is. Usually I would go down here and click on that. Anyway. Cursor. No. I've lost it. Because I'm an idiot. Alright. I just bit off more than I could chew. Sorry, everybody. Let's do the event for when we mouse over this label just here. So let's click on the label, make sure label color is selected. Okay, go to events, and you're looking for mouse, where's the mouse is? Here it is, mouse enter. So mouse enter is when the mouse cursor goes inside the control. Now the one thing I want to emphasize here is that the text is not just all the label is. This, all this white padding around it, this transparency, is also part of the label. So whenever the mouse enters in any of this rectangle, it's going to execute our code. It will trigger it off. So let's double click on the mouse enter. Okay. And let's change the color text of the label. 
So label color dot foreground. Notice it's a brush again. Equals brushes dot red. All right. To test it out, click and start. So it works, but it doesn't go back. And that's because we haven't coded when the mouse leaves. And you can probably guess how easy this one's going to be. You come down to mouse leave, okay, and then you just set it back to black. Okay, remember it's the text, so it has to be black. Hit play, and there it is. And it will do it in every instance. Why did we do that? I don't know. We just did it for the funsies. All right. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, everybody. Hopefully you learned something about events and a little bit of your code execution and how they can occur. So in the next video, I'm going to emphasize a little bit on XAML and I'm going to show you how we can just code our controls into existence and do a few things like that. And until then, comment, like, subscribe down the bottom. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks very much, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.